shadows of this life have grown I'll fly away Like a bird from prison bars have flown I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory I'll fly away In the morning When I die, hallelujah, bye Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory I'll fly away In the morning when I die hallelujah bye Bye and bye, I'll fly away. Amen. Good morning, church. Oh, what a promise we have. One day we will fly away to the place that the joys never end. What a beautiful, beautiful day we have outside. Nice, crisp, cool fall morning. We are so glad that you guys are here with us this morning. So uh, let's start out, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we are so grateful for today, Lord, just the beauty of your creation today, Lord, just uh, the cool, crisp air this morning as we were coming in. Lord, it's so refreshing. And Father, it's uh, refreshing to be in your house this morning, Lord, to feel your presence. Lord, just to have the opportunity to come in to, to worship you, Lord, to, to hear your word. And, Father, just to lay our burdens down at the altar. So, Father God, today I pray that we all be obedient to your leading of your spirit. Lord, that uh, we leave here changed from the way we came in. Lord, that we're ready to fly away that one day. So, Lord, uh, be with us this morning during service. Let everything that's sung and said just be honor, honoring and glorifying to your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we have some announcements this morning. First up, we have the Hope Seekers Wednesday night. So, uh... Thank you to everybody that's been participating in that. We've been averaging around 90 kids every Wednesday. So uh, things are going really well there. Um, do want to make a new announcement when it comes to that. So uh, we've been praying for a while that uh, we can start up some new clubs during this, uh, during this ministry. And uh, I know for the last two years, Anthony and I have been praying, praying for this. And God's answered prayers. Starting this week, this Wednesday evening, if you have two-year-olds that you would like to come and join us here in Hope Seekers, bring them out. We have a class that will be specifically just for them, the twos and the early threes that can go in there to, to begin that foundational experience of learning about Jesus. So uh, we're so thankful to those who have volunteered to help out with that. So uh, this Wednesday, bring them out. We're going to do their schedule just a little bit differently. So we're going to try to get them here about 6.30 to start eating dinner. And then uh, we're going to try to be finished up with them about 7.15 um, and see how, see how that goes. And you guys just, just be patient with us as we go through and we're figuring this out with the little ones. Uh, we know their schedule is going to, be, going to need to be just a little bit different than some of the older kids. So we're going to, we'll figure that out as we go. But uh, so excited to see, to see that ministry get up and off the ground. Uh, I want to remind you guys again about the Ladies' Craft Night that's going to be on Thursday, the 12th of October. I know Miss Francis has some uh, craft stuff planned for everyone. Uh, it's always good. She does an excellent job planning that, that stuff out. So if you want to come out, it's that Thursday, the 12th at 6.30. And uh, remember, it's $2 um, if you want to, want to participate for all the supplies that, that she purchases to, to make that happen. So if you guys uh, have time, come out and be a part of that. I always hear good things, good things about that ministry. Trunk or treat. Happy October to everybody. It's hard to believe that we are in the month of October, and this year is almost completely gone. We're three-fourths of the way through the year, and it's just absolutely amazing to me of how quickly it's flown by. 
We're starting to get some candy out in the in the buckets out in the in the in the cafe. So again, if you can uh, buy some candy, put in the buckets that we'll give out on that night. Like I said, we have a lot of kids that roll through here on uh, on that evening. Um, and people have been asking me about it in the community that I've ran in. Are you guys doing that again? Are you guys going to do that again? So uh, folks in the community know they enjoy coming out and, and being part of that. So if you, if you can, bring some candy, drop it in the, in the buckets outside, and uh, we will do it upright for these kids again. Also, with the month of October, we get Ham Festival. It is that time of year when that is right here upon us, October the 21st. That's like three weeks from now, right? You guys realize how close? Three weeks. So uh, looking forward to that. It's always a great day, always a great time with the vendors and things that go on here. So uh, we really need your support, need your help. If you guys haven't noticed, Miss Patricia is a little out of, out of commission right now. I did see her not with a scooter today. I think she had crutches today, so that is a, that's a blessing. But she's going to need a lot more help this year than she's, than she's done in the past. So uh, you guys go talk to her, see what you can do to help out. I know she has some raffle tickets that she's selling. Uh, so if you want to get a book of those to go sell, please see her, and she can, she can get those in your hand. But uh, that's just a few weeks away, so you guys remember that as, uh, as you're doing your planning. Also, it's hard to believe, but Christmas playtime is right upon us. So we are almost to that time to start practicing. So, again, I need more hands. Jordan made me a cheat sheet. So this year's Christmas play is going to be called Back to the Manger. Y'all, I saw she showed it to me Wednesday night, showed me a little bit of the book and stuff. It's got kind of a Back to the Futurist theme, so I geeked out a little bit. I like that. So uh, practices are going to start here um, in just a couple weeks. So ages, uh, any kid, right? No specific ages, all the way, all the way up. So uh, we do ask that if, you, if one of your kids wants to be involved and they're three year old, years old or under, we do ask that you stay here and practice because uh, we're going to have a lot of kids around here. We're going to start practicing on Monday nights um, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary. So uh, keep that in mind if you guys want to be involved. Uh, we will be getting a list out a little later on of, of props and supplies that we need to go along with the play. So uh, you guys be on the lookout for that. Also want to mention that uh, we have some, some coupons and some tickets out in the, uh, in the cafe for the Belk Charity Sale. They are back there in the back. The flyers are out on the, on the welcome table. And then if, you, uh, if you're interested in that and you want to you wanna go be a part, we have those coupons we'll give to you as well. Um, also, there's a lot of Tupperware that's in the kitchen. If you guys have some that you've left here, it's in the kitchen on the, on the counters, I believe. So make sure you try to grab that and take that, take that back home with you. Uh, last on my list here, what have I got? I got coffee with the pastor. Anthony really likes coffee. He really likes you too. So he'd like to put those two together and sit down and chat and uh, get to know you guys a little bit better. You guys get to know him. And again, I'm the same way. If you guys want to sit down with me and talk about anything, I'm more than willing. To but uh, we would love that opportunity to sit, to sit with you guys and talk about the church, your needs, whatever you have going on. Prayer list. Uh, we've got a couple new new names that we want to add. We want to add today on the on the prayer list. Uh, first, we want to add the Charles Wilmoth family. This is my uncle. Uh, we had told you guys that he was going to have to have a valve, valve replacement in his heart. Uh, wasn't strong enough to get that uh, surgery. Uh, ultimately, passed away last Wednesday. So, uh, if you guys will keep our family in your prayers, we really appreciate it. Uh, we also want to add this morning Cheryl Cox. Um, this is Heather Edwards' uh, mom, right? She has some infection going on. So if you guys remember her, uh, lift that entire family up in prayer. We would really appreciate it. Also, again, I say this all the time. Go into your app. Go online. Look at the prayer list. Um, pray for these people. I think that's why people come to us and want us to put their names on our list is they know that we pray. So I, I do challenge you guys to make sure you're looking at this throughout the week and, and you're lifting these folks up that we don't mention, um, but you're lifting these folks up that are, that are on the list. And so this morning, I want to share some scripture with you. Um, this week's been a little tough. There's been a lot that's went on. There's been a lot that's went on behind the scenes that people don't know about. And I think it's just a reminder that there's a lot going on in the lives of people. And as I was praying about it this morning of, of what the Lord would want me to share this morning, just a little bit of a scripture. Ephesians 6, um, verse 12 
came to my heart. It says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And he says, But take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. So church, I pray today that if you're one, one of the ones that's going through these tough times, that you've got these, these powers and these principalities that, that are just on top of you, that are, that are trying to beat you down, that you don't forget the one that, that's already won the battle, that, that you're here and you, you know the one that, that can help you get through it and, and can help you um, just sustain and, and keep fighting the good fight. So this morning as we stand and worship, I pray that you remember that. And I pray that we worship the one that, that has it all in control, the one that that has orchestrated everything that has ever went on, everything that is going on, everything that ever will go on, and that we give him the praise and worship today that he deserves. So I ask you that you stand with us as we worship. It's who you are, it's who you are, 
We just come to you today this morning, God, and we thank you so much for your goodness that you're pouring out in us this morning. God, thank you for even when we don't see it, God, your evidence of your glory, God, your faithfulness, your love is all over our life, God. Lord, even when we are in the trenches, Lord, you're there to pull us out. God, even when we struggle with anxiety, with loss, with grief, God, you're right there. And God, we just thank you for everything you are, God, everything you've done, everything you will do, Lord. And we just come into your presence, God, just willing and just wanting to be in your presence, Lord. And God, I pray if there's anyone here, God, that needs to 
feel your presence, God, and just need in a little bit this morning, God. I just pray that you bless them. God, I pray you be with each and every one of us that we just let you come into our hearts this morning, God. And I just pray that this whole service is more of you and less of us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat.
And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. I pray that you can feel the sweetness of God's presence this morning. Well, good to see you this morning, church. Amen. 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 There we go. Uh, it is good to see you here in the Lord's house on this absolutely beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I've been praying uh, for you and your family. Uh, this week, uh, that nothing would hold you back or nothing would hinder you from uh, being in the Lord's house uh, here today. And not only have I been praying that you would come through these doors, but that you would come through these doors uh, with the right motives and uh, the right intentions here today, uh, to fellowship with one another, to, uh, to honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through song and worship and to open his word together and allow him the opportunity uh, to minister to our hearts. And uh, that is what we all need, whether we realize it or not. We need the Lord to minister uh, to our hearts. Uh, I've been looking forward to this all week. Of course, I'm a weirdo. I look forward to Sunday mornings, being in church, I guess. Uh, but uh, especially have looked forward to being here uh, this Sunday morning. But before we look at the Word of God together, uh, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our children, let them make their way to the back for their lesson. Remember, we have something uh, for uh, those fifth grade and down. And for everyone else, I'm going to ask that you give the Lord your undivided attention here this morning. Uh, no talking, uh, no uh, scrolling through your phones, no distractions, uh, because I believe... Uh, the Lord intends to do something here in our midst uh, this morning. So go ahead and open your Bibles with me. And today I'm going to ask that you turn to two places in Scripture. Uh, the book of Malachi, as well as the Gospel of Matthew. Malachi is the very last book in the Old Testament. And the book of Matthew is the very first book in the New Testament. They're back to back. And I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between these two sets of Scripture, and I want you to be right there with me every step of the way. If you have your Bibles this morning, hold them up. Hold them up. There we go. Uh, bring your Bibles to church. Bring your Bibles to church here this morning. Again, we're going to be looking at Malachi 13, or Malachi 3, verses 16 through 18, Mal uh, Matthew 13, verses 45 uh, to 51. Read them with me here this morning, beginning in the book of Malachi. We're told, and then they that feared the Lord spoke often to one another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And the Lord said, And they shall be mine in the day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Then the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 44. Our Lord says again, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth it, and for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, fine pearls, 
who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind of fish, which when it was full, they drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, into baskets, but cast, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? Have you understood all these things? Let us pray. Father God, we come to you here this morning and we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, in your presence, with your people. And uh, Father God, I pray that you would give us understanding here this morning. Lord, help us to see you, help us to see uh, the scriptures in a whole new light here today. And Father God, I pray that you eliminate distractions, Lord, that you'll settle our hearts, allow us to settle in. And Lord, to hear a word from you here today. Father God, I pray that you put things into a new light and into a new perspective for each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray that you are honored and we pray that your Son, the Christ, is glorified. Father God, we pray these things in your name here this morning. And God's people said, Amen. Now this morning, I want to speak on the subject of value. The subject of value, particularly the value of a man. Now, value is defined in the dictionary as the amount considered to be a fair and suitable equivalent for something else. That is value. The amount considered to be a fair and suitable equivalent for something else. That is the value of something, what someone is willing to give for something else. To put it another way, it's the monetary or uh, material worth of something. And this morning, above all else, I want you to see your worth. Church, I want you to see your value in the eyes of God. Now, we live in a day and time and in a society, I believe, where our value is defined by the world. We allow the world to define our value, and we allow the world to do it in any number of ways. Oftentimes, the world defines our value by how we look how we smell, the clothes we wear, the, the car we drive, the, the house we live in. Perhaps it's the popularity that we have at school. Maybe our intellect, the, the degree of education we have or, or maybe don't have, our job. Oftentimes our value is defined by our net worth, how much money we've got in the bank, how much is in our 401k. Other times our value is defined by what we have to offer others or perhaps how many likes we have on Facebook or so-called friends. This is how the world defines our value. And unfortunately, for the most part, we've bought into it. We allow the world to appraise or determine our value. And because of that, I believe many of us, if not most of us, have lost our sense of value here this morning. There's someone who's always better looking, someone who's always smarter, someone who's always more popular, someone who's always got more money, someone who always has a more prestigious career. And through this system of comparison, and that's what it is, through this system of comparison, we depreciate our own value. We depreciate our own value. And then we're devalued by life in general. We're, we're devalued by the daily struggles, I believe, that we face. Let's be honest, life is hard, amen? Uh, living in this world, uh, when you're doing so, it comes with anxiety. There's depression, there's loneliness, there's heartache, there's heartbreak. There's worry over the unknown. Problems at school, problems at home, problems at work, problems with family. And when we don't live up to our expectations or when we don't live up to the expectations of others, we devalue ourselves in our own minds. The daily struggles of life and the things we face causes us to devalue our own selves. And it's very, very subtle. It's happening a lot of times we don't even realize it. 
And then we are devalued by sin. Devalued by sin. And that's any sin. Could be anger, could be bitterness, resentfulness, pornography, sinful lust, sinful desires. The list goes on and on and on. But we're all guilty of committing sin, and we're all guilty of committing sin on a daily basis. And when we commit sin, by default, we devalue our own worth. That's what sin does. It devalues us. We no longer feel worthy to approach God, but again, that's what sin is designed to do, to devalue us and drive us further and further away from the Lord. Church, when I look at myself, In my own sinfulness, I see a man who has little to no value. When I look at myself, I see a great sinner, but when I look to Christ, I see a great Savior. And that's what I want you to see this morning. I want you to see His incredible value. And this morning, I want you to see Christ and His greatness, perhaps like you've never seen Him before. And hopefully over the next few moments, you'll begin to understand your value here this morning and not only your value but the value of the one we love and we serve now to begin with this morning I want you to notice the desire of Christ here in our text now here in the book of Matthew we're introduced to two parables in fact we're introduced to three but I I want to focus on the first two to begin with the parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the pearl of great price and in both parables we find Jesus Jesus is represented in both parables. In the first parable, Jesus is represented by the man who finds this treasure hidden in a field. In the second parable, he's the merchant man who is seeking one pearl of great price. So Jesus is the man in both parables. Now in the the first parable, this treasure hidden in a field is primarily a, a reference to the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is God's precious treasure. Listen to what we're told in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. We're told, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. We're told in Psalm 135, verse 4, For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel as his peculiar treasure treasure so this treasure that is hidden in the field this treasure that is hidden in the world is the nation of israel now in the second parable jesus is speaking about this pearl of of great price this pearl of of great value now as we all know pearls come from the sea and in the bible oftentimes the sea represents the gentile nations it represents all the people group outside the nation of israel So with that being said, the pearl of great price is a reference to the church. A reference to you. You are the pearl of great price here this morning. And the Lord has this great desire, this great longing for you. He has this great desire for the nation of Israel. He has this great desire for the church. He has this great desire for every person under the sound of my voice. And that desire is revealed to us in Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. Look again at what we're told. The Lord says, and they shall be mine. That is an emphatic statement. God says, they shall be mine in the day when I make up my jewels. In effect, the Lord says, these jewels are mine. This treasure hidden in the field and this pearl of great price shall be mine these are God's treasures his most valued property his most prized possessions the nation of Israel and the church God's most prized possessions which means by default if you're a believer you are one of God's most prized possessions here this morning and he has determined to have you so determined in fact, to have you, that he was willing to sell all that he had in order to purchase you this morning. Look again at what Jesus says here in the Gospel of Matthew. Again, we're told the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it, and for the joy thereof went and sold all that he had 
and bought the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking fine pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now we defined value a few minutes ago as the fair and suitable equivalent for something else. It's what someone is willing to give for something else. Whether it's goods, whether it's services, time, money. Value is based on what someone is willing to give. And here in our text, we're told that Jesus sold all that he had. All that he had to purchase these treasures. Sold all that he had this morning to purchase the nation of Israel, to purchase the church, to purchase you and me. Now, I want us to think about that for a moment. Jesus sold all that he had. What does that mean? What does that entail? What exactly was the cost that Jesus paid for us? What exactly did he willingly exchange, willingly give up for us? Well, first, he willingly gave up all those things that were rightfully his. All those things that were rightfully his. All those things that are rightfully God's. Keep in mind, that's who Jesus is. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And as God, he has certain rights, certain privileges, certain possessions that only God possesses, that only God enjoys. And he gave them all up. Sold them all. In order to purchase you. And we have no understanding of the magnitude of that statement. The magnitude of that truth. Not on this side of heaven we don't. We have no idea what it means. What God gave up to come and purchase us. But one day we're going to see it, church. One day we're going to see it. As believers, one day we're going to see everything that God gave up. We're going to see all the rights and and all the privileges and all the, the majesty and honor, all of His riches. Everything He gave up. Everything He laid aside for us. Jesus gave up all the things that were rightfully His in order to come and purchase you. Secondly, He sold his glory laid aside his glory for you gave up that glory that that comes with that face to face communion with the father that face to face relationship with him Moses just got a glimpse of his glory and his his face shined for days but Jesus had enjoyed that glory that, that face to face communion with God for all of eternity all of eternity Never knew life apart from it. But he sold it. Gave it up. For you and for me. And I would dare say that that out of all the things that Jesus gave up, his face-to-face fellowship with the Father was the most difficult to, to do. And I believe we know that to be the case because it's the one thing he longed for at the end of his ministry. The one thing he prayed for, for that fellowship with the Father to be restored. Listen to his prayer in John chapter 17, beginning in verse 4. Jesus is praying. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Jesus is praying. He's saying, Father, restore my glory. The glory that I enjoyed with you for all of eternity, the glory that I laid aside. Thirdly, Jesus sold his dignity, gave up his dignity in order to purchase you. I mean, for most of us, our dignity is not for sale, or at least it's the last thing we'll sell out on. But Jesus gave up his dignity 
is dignity for us. Listen to what we're told in Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 6. We're told Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, so here we're told that as God, Jesus didn't selfishly cling, he didn't hold to all those things that were rightfully his, but made himself of no reputation and took the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, gave up his dignity, sold his dignity, in order to purchase you. God became a man. I think that's like a man becoming a rat. Would you be willing to make that trade this morning? Would you be willing to give up your dignity to become a rat and live in the sewer system? That's what Jesus did. The world is a rat-infested sewer system in comparison to heaven. That's what the world is. And God confined himself to a man's body. Imagine that. God confined himself to a man's body, subjected himself to, to man's weakness, subjected himself to man's abuses. God allowed man to beat on him and to spit on him and to mock him and to scourge him. He allowed man to disfigure him to the point that he was no longer recognizable. He allowed that. He allowed man to pluck out his beard. Would you allow anybody to do that? Allow a man to pluck out his beard. Smash a crown of thorns on his head. God allowed that. God allowed man to scourge him. God allowed man to whip him up a hill. Lay a cross on his shoulder. He allowed man to lay him out and then strip him of his clothes. Completely naked. God exposed to the world. Completely naked on the cross. Then he allowed man to drive nails in his hands and his feet. And then when they rose him up, he allowed mankind to rail on him. If you be God, come down from the cross. Some of you today are railing on God sold his dignity sold his dignity to purchase us and then in a moment in time in a way we cannot understand the sins of the world were laid on him my sin and your sin and in that moment he gave up his relationship with the father cried out my God my God why have you forsaken me he sold his relationship with the father imagine it sold his relationship with the Father to bear our sins. That was the price he was willing to pay. And finally, he gave up his life. Man didn't take his life. God gave it up. Gave up his life for you. Gave up his life in order to purchase you so that you would have heaven and eternal life. We're told in 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed, you were not bought with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but you were bought with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without spot and without blemish. This is what Jesus gave up. This is your value this morning this is what you're worth let that sink in you are worth just as much as everything that's rightfully God's <laughs> we're to fall on our knees this morning you are just as you're worth just as much of all, as all of his rights as all of his privileges as all of his possessions combined 
That's your value. You're worth just as much as His glory. Think about that one. Worth just as much as His glory. He considers fellowship with you just as important, just as valuable as His fellowship with the Father. Your relationship with Him. He considers that just as valuable as His relationship with the Father. He sold the one in order to gain the other. That's the cross. And not only that, but your worth is equivalent to the dignity of the King of Kings. If we could put a value on the King's dignity, that's what you're worth. That's what you're worth. Amen. And not only that, but God considers His life to be just as valuable as His life. That's what He gave up. That's the price He paid for you. Are you beginning to get a sense of your value this morning? Mm. You're precious. Do you understand these things? Jesus says here in our text, do you understand these things? Jesus sold it all, all, sold all he had. The one who owns it all sold it all that he had for you. The Bible says the king became poor so that you might be rich. told in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for his for your sake he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich Jesus became poor he sold all that he had so that you might become rich and he didn't do it begrudgingly no. We're told here in Matthew that he did it with joy. Again, we're told in verse 44 that the kingdom of heaven is like a, a treasure hid in a field. When a man found it, he hid it, and for the joy thereof, for the joy thereof, went and sold all that he had and bought the field. Jesus did it all with joy for the joy that was set before him. But I want you to notice this morning that Jesus not only sold all that he had to purchase you, but he sold all that he had to purchase the entire field, to purchase the entire world. That's what the field represents in all these parables here in the 13th chapter. Jesus defines it for us, I think, in verse 35. The field represents the world. Jesus sold all of it to purchase the world. We're told in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, and, and Jesus is the propitiation, the mercy seat, the substitution for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus places the same value on all people this morning, even if we don't places the same value on that addict same value on that homeless man on the corner the same value on that corrupt politician you can't stand same value same value on that transvestite leading the latest LBGTQ movement Jesus loves the whole world the whole world finds value in all people even if the church does not this is the gospel message this is the gospel message this is the dragnet across the entire world again Jesus says here in our third parable in Matthew 13 verse 47 the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered fish of every kind the gospel message is thrown into the sea of humanity. It covers the whole world. All people. All people. And it catches fish of all kinds. 
And with that imagery, the, the people of this day would have immediately thought about the Sea of Galilee and, and the fishing trade, the nets that were constantly being, fa- being cast into the lake. And we're told that there are over 20-some different species of fish found in the lake. Some are good, some are bad. Some can be eaten, some cannot. Some have fins and scales, some are like eels, and some even resemble snakes. Some are small and some are large. Some are diseased and deformed and some are hardy and and healthy. The dragnet catches all fish, all types of fish. And the gospel is no different. The gospel message is no different this morning. It catches fish of all kinds. The professing church, the visible church, the church that we can see with our eyes, consists of all types of people. Some are hardy and healthy. Some are diseased, spiritually diseased and deformed. Some are good and some are bad. Some are fit for the kingdom of heaven. Some are not. The Bible tells us that there are some within the visible church who have an outward form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They're the scribes and the Pharisees in our midst. It's all about the law. All about the law. They're concerned about their outward showing, the outward showing of Christianity, putting on uh, hypocrisy. Concerned only with the law, concerned only with church tradition. Boy, you've got to love church tradition. Refusing to balance truth and mercy. Refusing to. No grace, just judgment. Then the Bible tells us that there's others in the visible church who make a superficial commitment to Christ, but their faith has no depth. And when the sun rises, when things get hot, and it will, they will away, they fall away from the church. Because they have no root in themselves. Then there's those within the visible church who profess Christ but don't walk a walk worthy of their calling. They allow the cares of this world and the riches here in America to choke out their faith. Choke it out. And then the Bible says there's those in the visible church who are truly upright in the eyes of God. True Christians who are hardy and healthy. And Jesus reveals all this in the 13th chapter of Matthew. You can read it for yourselves. It's all there. Those are the words of Jesus. The dragnet is catching fish of all kinds. And it's confusing. It's confusing for us today. Because all are claiming to be called in the dragnet of the gospel. All are claiming it. But understand, all these fish are going to remain together to the end of the age. Jesus says here in verse 48 that when the dragnet is full, he says, I'm going to drag it to shore. I'm going to drag it to shore. And then I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to separate the good from the bad. I'm going to start separating the good from the bad from the bad I'm going to look at the professing church the visible church everyone who claimed to be caught by the dragnet of the gospel I'm going to look through it one by one by one and sort the good from the bad the wheat from the tares the true believers from the make believers Jesus says all will remain together until that time now understand all these who are found in a dragnet attach themselves to the church. All do. They attach themselves to the church. They all profess Christ. They all profess an attachment to the gospel. They all feel confident. They all feel confident where they stand in regards to God. But God's able to make distinctions able to tell the difference between the true believer and the make-believer, the pretender. The Lord has this ability to differentiate the, the weakest of saints 
from the most refined of hypocrites. And that's what the majority of the church today consists of, especially here in America. You've got two major groups in the church. You've got, you got the weak, weak saints, and on the other hand, you've got some refined hypocrites. That's what the church consists of, for the most part. But, but God's able to see the difference. The difference between the righteous and the wicked. The difference between the just and the unjust. The difference between the useful and the useless. But what is it that differentiates the two? Because all of us here are claiming it. Or most of us. Not everybody, but most of us. What determines where the Lord will place you? What determines that? What determines if he'll place you in his basket or toss you to the side? What a horrifying scene to be tossed to the side, flipping and flopping and gasping for air. Well, the difference is the one who is placed in the basket, the one who is placed in the basket will be the one who truly valued Jesus in this life. That's the difference. That determines where each person in the visible church is placed. Whether or not you truly valued Jesus Christ. And those who truly value Christ have three distinct characteristics. And the Lord reveals those characteristics to us in the book of Malachi. Look at them. First, notice that those who truly value the, value the Lord or value Jesus fear the Lord. They fear the Lord. Again, we're told here in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, then those that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened. The Lord paid attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those that feared the Lord. Those who truly value Christ, those who truly value his work on the cross, fear the Lord. That word fear means to treat someone with respect. Treat someone with love. To love and respect someone to the point you're willing to yield to their desires. Willing to yield to their wishes. To their opinion. Literally means to revere someone. To, so, to hold someone in high esteem. To have, a, to have a sense of awe and wonder. This is what it means. To fear the Lord. Those who truly fear the Lord, those who truly respect God, honor His Word by obeying it. They put their faith in His Word. They believe the Word, even if they don't understand it. Those who fear the Lord put their faith in Christ. They worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Those who truly fear the Lord are devoted to His church. That's how the fear of the Lord manifests itself in real life, in real time. There's a respect there. I look out on the church today and so many so-called believers, there's no respect. No respect for God, no respect for the things of God, no respect for the Word of God. Those who value Jesus have a healthy respect for God. They fear the Lord. Secondly, those who truly value Jesus honor Him with their lips and with their thoughts. Look again at what we're told here in Malachi three sixteen. We're told then those that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. 
And the Lord hearkened. He paid attention and heard it. And, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and they that fought upon his name. Those who value Jesus honor his name openly and publicly particularly with other believers that phrase spoke often to one another is reciprocal it's it's dialogue it's conversation constant conversation between believers about what God is doing and what God has done and what God will do in their lives carries the idea of talking with sincerity talking with intent with purpose notice those who value the Lord are not complaining they're not grumbling not murmuring to one another. They're talking with sincerity. They're encouraging one another. Professing Christ. Professing His work. Talking about what He's done in their life. Constantly talking and thinking about Christ. And we're told here in Malachi that this gets the Lord's attention. He bends down and listens. Like a father listening to a little child. He listens to our conversation and he's delighted by what he hears and he's so delighted that he takes a book the book of remembrance and begins to write things down records things records every word every thought of his child that's the second characteristic of someone who truly values Jesus they honor him with their lips and with their mouth and their mind and finally, notice those who truly value Jesus willingly serve Him. Look again at what we're told in Malachi chapter 3, beginning in verse 17. The Lord says, And they shall be mine in the day when I gather my jewels, and I will spare them and as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then you shall you return and discern. Then you'll be able to differentiate the, between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Those who truly value Jesus are willing to serve him. That word serve means to work. <laughs> to work for another person. To serve through labor. Something that's missing in our society. It carries the idea of being obedient to someone who is of higher position, higher ranking. See, here's the thing a lot of people profess that Christ is their Lord and Savior. But He cannot be your Lord. He is not your Lord if you're not willing to serve Him. Regardless of what you're claiming, regardless of what you think. God's looking for service. Looking for those who willingly serve Him, who want to serve Him. If you're not willing to roll up your sleeves and work for Him and His kingdom, if you're not willing to obey Him and His words, you're not doing anything but fooling yourself. You're not serving Christ. This is the third characteristic of someone who truly values Christ, a characteristic that is missing in the church today. He or she is willing to serve. And that looks different for all of us, but there's still a willingness. So on that day, the Lord's going to move past our profession. Okay? He's going to move past that. He's going to move past what we claim to be in this life. And he's going to take a look at who we really were. Who we really are. He's going to be looking at whether or not we really valued him. And what he's done for us. The Lord's going to look at our mind. Okay, He's going to look at our mind, whether or not we truly had a, a fearful respect for him. He's going to look at our hearts to see whether or not we honored Him with our lips and, and with our, our thoughts. And finally, He's going to look at our will to see if we were willing to serve Him. 
And if these three things are present, if you truly love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength and with all your soul and with all your will, then you will be placed in the basket. Because it proves that you truly valued Him. This is who God has mercy on. This is who God has compassion for. Again, we're told in Malachi 3, verse 17, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I gather my treasures, I will spare them. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Do you understand these things? Do you understand your value this morning? You're of great value this morning. Do you understand the value of Christ? The value of what Jesus did on the cross? Or are you just dismissing it? Is your heart so hard you can't hear the voice of God? You refuse to believe. I would hate to venture out into eternity not knowing You're a braver man than me. Braver man than me. Do you understand the value of what he's done? Do you understand that the Lord's able to tell the difference? I mean, you can fool some of us some of the time, but you're not going to fool all of us all the time. Church, here's the thing. Jesus has cast the dragnet of the gospel over the entire world. And right now, he's dragging it to shore. And we don't realize it, but he's dragging. Dragging it to shore. And when it's finally brought to land, when he lands his catch, the Lord's going to sit down. He's going to separate the good from the bad within the professing church. Then the visible church. It's going to separate the just from the wicked. The deformed from the healthy. Those who are written in his book and those who are not. And it's solely up to you where you find yourself. Jesus regards you as this great treasure, this pearl of great price. doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. He values you. He considers you one of his most valuable possessions, traded it all, just to have a shot at you. Just to have a shot. The question today is, do you value him the same way? question for all of us is Jesus your greatest treasure this morning is he your pearl of great price is Jesus your most valuable possession and if not are you willing this morning willing to sell all that you have in order to purchase him Willing to swallow your pride, confess that you're a sinner, put your faith in Him? Are you willing to do that to purchase salvation? We all make plans. We plan for everything. Plan what we're going to do next week, plan what we're going to do next weekend. We plan our retirement, how much money we need. Have you planned your life after your death that plan's contingent on you God's done his work we plan for everything but most forget to make that plan and really it's that plan that matters 
the only plan. All this was worth it for Jesus. You were worth it for Jesus. The question today is, is Jesus worth it for you? That's the question today. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we come to you here this morning, Lord, and Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for the value that you placed on each person here. Lord, that each one of us, believer and unbeliever alike, sinner and saint, hold incredible value in your eyes. And Lord, I pray that we as your people begin to see our worth. Oh God, the things that you traded for us. Father, help us to keep this in our minds and help us to live our lives in such a way that we are valuing you in our words, our actions, the life that we're living. And Father God, if there be those under the sound of my voice who haven't comprehended the gospel, don't see the value of the cross, Lord, I pray that today they begin to see it. Lord, because I too have been there where I'm blinded by the darkness, don't understand it, refuse to understand it, refuse to believe. Lord, I pray that you would penetrate hearts. Lord, that uh, they would show, shore up their plan for their, their eternal future. Father God, I pray that you've given us a new perspective here this morning, Lord. And Lord, we can't fathom it. You know, Lord, your goodness. Lord, each of us, we look at ourselves, we see great sinfulness, Lord. But when we look to Jesus, what a great Savior. Lord, we thank you for him. We thank you, Lord, for this plan of salvation, Lord. And Father God, I just pray that you have your will in this room, Lord. We believe this message was meant for someone. And Lord, maybe it's meant for, for those of us who've not valued you the way we should be. Maybe it's meant for the one who's never professed you and now see the value of the cross and the value you've placed on them. Lord, I pray as the church, Lord, that when we run across people, regardless of their past, regardless of what they're in, Lord, that we would see them the way you see them, of, as individuals of incredible worth, even though they may be dirtied up by the world. Father God, we thank you this morning. We praise you. We don't understand it. We don't understand it. But God, we thank you for it. The value you placed on each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that as we walk out of here today, Lord, we hold our heads up high. Uh, that we walk out of here with a sense of pride. Knowing that this is what we're worth to you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you here today. We pray that you were honored. We pray that the name of Christ was glorified. It's in his precious name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask that we stand. The Lord's been speaking to you, whether it be over the course of the week or over the course of this message. Why don't you respond? It could be your last time, your last opportunity. Don't take it for granted, church. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more.
Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. trust in Jesus just from sin and self to cease just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, Jesus, 
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, it is my privilege uh, uh, to uh, announce to you that Cameron Questenberry, this is Aaron's uh, daughter, uh, is coming today to rededicate her life, and uh, she is seeking uh, to be rebaptized. She was baptized at a very young age, uh, felt like she didn't really understand the implications and the magnitude of it all at that time. But uh, as she sat in here in church, uh, under God's word and, and in his presence, uh, she, he has been working, been convicting her, and uh, she finally gave in to that this week, so she comes forward. Uh, just graduated high school uh, back in the spring and entered this new chapter of her life, and it just, uh, nothing's better to see our young people uh, taking this public stand uh, for Jesus Christ, and it's something we should all do in light of what we've learned this morning. Uh, let us take a stand for Christ in the world we live in. But so we're going to schedule a baptism here, hopefully before it gets too cold. Uh, but give her, uh, if you have a moment today before you leave, go by, encourage her, encourage the family. Let's give her a round of applause here this morning for the stand she's made. Amen. I'll let you go back. Okay. Well, church, God bless you for being here this morning. Uh, I pray that uh, uh, I pray that the Lord has spoken to our hearts. I know he spoke to mine this week as he began to lay this on my heart and uh, began to lay it on my heart on Monday, and I couldn't see it all until he eventually revealed it all to me. Uh, but we just, uh, we love him, we love his word, uh, we love his church. And uh, I pray that uh, the same can be said of you here today. Remember all the announcements, all the things that are taking place. Remember, we've got something on Wednesday nights for two- to three-year-olds now, uh, starting this Wednesday. Again, like Travis said, be patient with us as we work out the kinks and things there. But we want to lay that foundation as soon as our children can walk. Uh, because we believe it's just that valuable. It is a race for the heart of our children. Uh, so we want to start at a very young age, so we're excited about that. Uh, remember the Tupperware in the back. If you've got Tupperware, hey, take it on home. Uh, we don't want it here. And uh, God bless you uh, for, for everything that you do. God bless you for being here this morning. Let me close us in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this absolutely beautiful day uh, that you have, uh, have given us. Lord, I thank you for the beauty uh, of your presence, Lord, the beauty of what you've done for us. Lord, it is a masterpiece. And Lord, we'll spend all of eternity trying to wrap our minds around it. But Lord, this morning we thank you. We thank you for the value you place on us. And Lord, in this world where we're constantly being devalued by others, devalued by society, uh, Lord, we thank you that uh, you still hold us in high esteem. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness. Lord, we've seen the goodness of God here this morning. Lord, we've also seen that you're just, that you're righteous. Uh, Lord, that uh, there's a day coming when we're all going to be held accountable. And uh, Father God, we don't want uh, anyone to hear uh, those words, depart from me, I never knew you. Lord, I think it's going to be a shocking day for many, uh, particularly many within the church. Uh, Father God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, you put desire in our hearts to value you. Lord, a lot of times we don't have desire to read your word or desire to do the things we ought to do. Lord, uh, help us just to pray for desire to do what is right. Lord, help us to desire you more and more. And uh, Father God, I pray that you'll just uh, continue to be glorified here in our midst. Lord, that you'll continue to move among us. Uh, Lord, that we'll just step out of, our, out of your way and just let you work. Lord, let you work in our own lives, the lives of our families, the life of this church, the life of this community. Lord, we just pray that you'll just continue to push back the darkness. Uh, Father God, we know, Lord, that uh, when you're in it, uh, when you're involved, Lord, that the enemy's just as involved. And Lord, I just fear far too often we, we play church, but Lord, we've got an enemy who's not playing. Lord, it is a war, and the Lord, uh, he's seeking. Lord, he's a lion seeking whom he may devour, trying to, to separate us from the fold and then just sift us. So, Lord, I just pray that you put a hedge of protection around each individual here, each individual watching on Facebook. Lord, I pray you put a, a hand of protection, a hedge of protection around their families, around their home. And, Lord, that you would remove any powers, any principalities that are in play. 
And Lord, we just pray that you'll do this in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we, just, uh, we look forward to what the week's going to bring, Lord. I pray that you bless uh, this people. Uh, Father God, you'll have your hand upon them. Uh, Lord, allow them to leave here. Lord, he- heads up high. Lord, walking with a spring in their step, knowing that they are valued in your eyes. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for what you've done for us. And all of God's people said, amen.